what's up everyone it is your girl jail beauty 87 here aka grace and it's time to get into my eyeshadow palette collection girl so i thought i'd give you a cute little intro or whatever here in my kitchen i just got done using the cosmic brushes what is it um delicious delights palette I'm pretty sure that's the name of it. And I have the highlighter on as well. But I accidentally deleted the other intro that I had to the first set of them. So I had to give y'all another one or else there would have been nothing. But um, I'm going to go through my eyeshadow palette collection with you all. You all know it's quite extensive. I love eyeshadow. So I'm going to have quite a few to talk about. Just FYI. But um, so I'm not bragging to show these palettes to you once a year someone always comes to my comment section as soon as the new year starts asking me to do this video so that's why we're doing this video the makeup i have in my collection that i do get rid of i give to my friends i give to my family i give to some of my co-workers wives because one of them is just getting into makeup so i'm not gonna give it to you i always buy y'all brand new stuff so you don't have to worry about as for my used makeup you get brand new stuff you don't have to worry about I use eyeshadow palette from three months ago that I used one time and threw to the side and didn't touch anymore. You don't have to worry about that, okay? I have brand new fresh stuff for you. So without further ado, let's get into it because girl, I am long with it. And since I have like five drawers, sorry, four, I think four drawers of eyeshadow palettes, it's going to be a long one, girl. So let's get into it, okay? Okay. I hope you enjoy. Hey, y'all, we on the grand finale. I hope you brought a snack because honey is a million trillion gazillion billion to go through so these are the ones that weren't in the drawer that they were supposed to be in when i showed you those so we're gonna get into those first and then we're gonna get into the drawer we actually supposed to be so start off with this this is the vr neon palette now i don't remember if i showed you all this from my grandma's house or not and i just actually brought it home with me so i figured i'd just show it here and now anyway but i'm pretty sure i leave the melt one there and i bring this one home because i prefer this one or maybe i just leave both of them there don't quote me but it's here we're here everyone so y'all know then we have the what is this the catrell white palette from adept cosmetics i didn't buy this when it first came out i ended up buying it when i bought the seahorse palette if i remember correctly but i had a discount code so i just went ahead and bought these two so i was like just get them all you know y'all know i love adept so i have to have them all so this i think it's supposed to be more like a face highlighter palette than an eye palette but i'm like i plan on putting it on my eyes not necessarily my face i think i used a couple of these on my eyes and like swatch these just to see how the colors look on top of it so here's that one this palette continues to disappoint me this is a spectral palette from linda hallberg um this purple shade is absolutely horrible this mint shade is okay but i feel like it looks patchy on the eyes so i'm trying to figure out what to do with this palette because i'm like i'm never impressed with the looks i've turned out with i always have to reach into other pastel palettes in order to get what i want out of them so i'm like i feel like i should just go ahead and get rid of it but at the same time i know i'm not gonna buy anything else from the brand i feel like that's why i just keep holding on to it or whatever i don't know what i'm gonna do with it but you know it's it's not giving um next i have the lost in los angeles palette from bh cosmetics i have this one i've used this one this week i was not impressed with it. i was kind of disappointed a little bit it did better than the linda hallberg one i combined them both together to get an eye look i think it was thursday the picture you all haven't seen for friday i did a look with it but i just didn't post it because i wasn't that impressed with it i felt like I used this blue in here, and then I used the um, mint green in the Linda Hallberg palette. I feel like it was just patchy, so I'm just kind of like, mm, I don't know. I'm fine with it, but you know. Anyway. Next, I have the Ugly palette from Likely Makeup. This is what she looks like on the inside. I gave y'all a look inspired by this palette recently. In one of my palettes that inspired me videos, I don't remember when that was going to go up. God only knows, but I did give you an eye look with it, and I think it's a stunning palette and this is what she looks like so i hope they come up with more eyeshadow palettes i hadn't buying in their blush palettes i know my girl karen has some of their blush palettes but y'all know me i have a love of eyeshadow and it wasn't a blush craze when her blushes came out plus they had like weird colors i wasn't necessarily crazy about so i was more into the eyeshadow palette. so i'm here for it it's gorgeous now my natasha just known a love palette if i remember correctly this is packed to go in the barbie video that i was supposed to be doing and that's why it's not or it wasn't in this video so here's what she looks like this is my favorite um palette from natasha nona when it comes to the midis like this is one of my all-time favorite midis um i do have some of the newer midis that you all have seen a minute that i recreated so it'll be your first look at them and that's what she looks like next we have the candy shop i ended up putting this in the box too if you all remember i don't think i showed it to you because um again it's supposed to go in the barbie video so as you can see it has a nice 
little mid section in the middle with pinks and then you have the classic neutral section on the outside and then like the blue on the other side so i like the color combinations i give with this palette i think it's really nice she this is one of my all-time favorite palettes from this brand. This is a Fantasy Cosmetica. This is Sorcerer Palette. I have not ordered the Fighter Palette yet. I've been holding off a little bit just because it's a little bit too neutral for me. But y'all know this is my color story right here. As you can see, my pink is breaking. I saw, um, I was watching somebody's eyeshadow palette, the Clutter and Collection video. And all their, like, sh shades from this brand were breaking. Like, uh, it was like a shade in it. a couple of palettes they showed that had broke down. I think one was matte and one was a shimmer. It might have been both of them in matte. I don't know what I was just kind of like, mm. So be on the lookout um, and check your palettes. Next, I have the So Strange palette from Unearthly Cosmetics. This is what it looks like on the inside. I think this is gorgeous, stunning color story. I made an eye look with some of the part up here that I was inspired to make by the new Unearthly Cosmetics. Uh, what is it? Um, Halloween collection that they have coming out. The artwork went with it. I um, made the eye look because I thought it looked stunning. Next, I have the unearthly cosmetic sleepover palette i didn't show you all this because again it was in the um luggage to go film the barbie core video or whatever but this is what it looks like so there you go let me grab another set of palettes for y'all to look through i think i have one more i have a couple more one-off palettes that is just one palette from the brand and nothing else and then i will get into um the groups of palettes because the majority of the group palettes down here at the bottom are like groups of palettes so that's why i um saved the drawer for last because i knew i had a whole bunch of like palettes from the brand so this one is the sydney grace and mel thompson bundle this is for her bundle that she's inspired to make based upon the mini retro palette before the retro glam palette came out this is the design she came out with i like males much better than i like the original palette just because i feel like she gave good tones for all skin tones when it came to lights and darks and medium tones in between where i feel like the natasha denona one doesn't give you that greater variety i feel like it's um more catered toward lighter skin tones but you know next i have i just tried this brand this year this is gloss god the color of brain and they actually featured me on the instagram page with one of the looks i did this palette is stunning look at how gorgeous it is and how the colors are as you can see mine is well loved because a lot of the shades have dips in them and whatnot even though i haven't had it this long but i think she's stunning and gorgeous kind of reminds me of the ninhydrin palette though from adept cosmetics if I thought of anything, just with the shifts and the tones, if you saw my swatch video, then you know what I'm talking about. But that's what it looks like. I am interested in another palette that they have that I'm probably going to go ahead and get my hands on just because she's so stunning and gorgeous that I think I need in my collection. So if they have a Black Friday sale, I would definitely be tuned in. Next, I have the Alamar Cosmetics and Disney Encanto palette. This is what she looks like on the inside. I think this is a gorgeous color story. I'm glad I got my hands on it. I initially wanted it, and then I was like, no, I'm not going to buy it. Then my friend was like, well, what do you want for... Um, christmas or whatever and she was like i was like well i think i kind of want the encanto palette because i was going to get it then i changed my mind so she ended up buying it for me and that's how i ended up getting in my collection and i'm so glad because i love the color story and formula of this palette and it's my only palette from the brand alamar cosmetics i was looking at it for a while but then i was just like hmm i don't know if i'm gonna get it anymore or not so i'm so glad she ended up getting it for me since i was so indecisive <laughs> Next, I have the Dragon Fruit Palette. I don't know if I showed this one or not. I feel like I did. I'm not sure. It was on my table in my living room, but I don't know if I bought it or not. Okay, let me talk about it. Um, but yeah, so then this is what it looks like on the inside. I love the formula of their palettes. I think they are so gorgeous. I don't remember if I have the um, what Dream Deep Sea Treasure Palette here or not. If I do, then I'm showing these out of order. My apologies, because I only have two palettes from this brand. But I feel like I didn't... Sh show this one and it was in one of the other drawers from earlier so that's why i wanted to show it now and if i did my apologies you just saw it twice but it's stunning so why not the last single one-off palette i have is the lowest cosmetics mimi in the underworld eyeshadow palette this is what she looks like on the inside you got the um burgundies and mauvish tone shades and you got the greens right here so i always look at it like this is another version of the what do you call that palette the um gemini 2 palette because you gotta think it has the gemini on one side the original gemini with all these greens and the black and that shades and then you have gemini 2 over here with all the more burgundy -ish tone shades so if you didn't want to get the gemini palette and want to support another small owned business then i feel like it'd be a good I did for you to give me the Meet Me in the Unworld palette. Now, the one they had called Meet Me at Midnight, I wasn't a fan of. I didn't like the formula of it. It wasn't anything wrong with the color story. It was just the formula wasn't doing it for me. But this one is really nice. Now, I don't know what's going on with this brand because I haven't seen her post anything on Instagram in a million years. So, I just keep that in mind. I don't know. Now, I'm going to go off camera and grab some more sets of palettes. For so, let's um, 
found some other one-off things to show you. So here we go. This is the Vitality palette. Y'all know this is one of my all-time favorite palettes from Unearthly Cosmetics. I think I have a top three or top five, and this is probably like probably number one on the list. They give you this cute sunset moment right here. You get your nice green and yellow moment, and then y'all know me got blue and purple, so I just got a huge blue, green, and purple palette, and then a sunset I do lips with when I feel like it. So this is everything. I heard she's supposed to be changing the formula on the um shimmers in this one and re-releasing it so you all already told me you want me to compare it to some other ones so i'm like okay sure why not i found a couple more blend bunny palettes that i didn't show initially so i have the lure palette now i'm not gonna have all my woman's eye palettes here with me to show you all in the collection video because i had to leave the one from tina the hummingbird and the planet spirit palette behind because i had to what do you call it um do a palette satisfy me no a top 10 my top 10 favorite palettes from Uden's eye video and those are the two i chose to combine because y'all know it's my favorite color story like this is another one of my favorite color stories if you cover this one up right here it still has a majority of what i like my blues my greens my purples i get two different sets of blues a green a purple and then a pink and then you get this nice little um cool tone section for when you want to do a cool tone smoky eye so to me this is still my favorite my newest favorite what is this brand um Lynn bunny palette because it's just giving and i'm living and i'm obsessed Next, we have the Sugar and Grunge palette. I don't know if I brought this out or not. I don't think I did because it was in my living room and I couldn't be bothered. But, you know, since I'm done using it now and I've done videos and everything else, I figured I could bring it back and put it back in my collection for the drawer. So, this is what she looks like on the inside. I love the color story as far as, like, the pastels go and the music go. I feel like the um, deeper tones, I wasn't as impressed with it as I normally am. Especially this green and this one right here. Like these two especially I was like kind of disappointed by. The rest of them look fine. But it's just those two I feel like just look really similar and didn't do it for me. But otherwise, I like the palette. I like the color story. And I like the looks I've created with it. I want to try to do some more looks with it. But I have newer palettes coming in. And I still want to play with some of my older stuff. So that's why we're skipping on that for right now. I have my Lunar Retrograde palette from French Cosmetics and Neon MUA. A.K.A. Darius. He's worked with ColourPop to help them with their inclusivity when it comes to the um people of color which i appreciate and this is what his palette looks like so this is his i think second or third collab i know he did a collab with the brand that doesn't exist anymore what do you call them um uh crap what's the name of that brand Smokey Gold did a palette with them too. I just don't remember the name of the brand. But he had the Dawn Till Dusk collection. And I have his face palette. So this is another brand he... Uh, oh, Midas. Midas Cosmetics. That's what it was. But yeah, I love the color service palette. I think it is stunning. And I'm not happy to have it in my collection. I need to pull it out and use it again some more. I don't know if you can still get it anymore. But I love Barry. So I'm going to still use mine. Bizarre. Thank you. Then I have the Deep Sea Treasure palette. Don't remember if I showed this one or not. I meant to show this one when I showed the... um the dragon um fruit palette a dragonfly palette is this is what it looks like it's stunning as you can see mine as well used quite dirty there and loved um i love the shimmers in this palette i love the shimmers from the brand it's just they don't really come out with palettes so i don't have a tendency to just buy singles whenever they do come out singles i'm like yes give it to me now i have my color pop hocus pocus 2 palette what ended up happening with this was because of the size of it, it doesn't fit in the drawer of my other ColourPop palettes. So that's why it was randomly in the drawer with all the other palettes where it would fit. So this is what it looks like. I did change out one shade. I forgot which shade it is. But I changed that one. I want to change out this one as well. I think I changed out this one down here. Don't quote me though. I might not have changed anything out yet. But I'm definitely interested in changing out this green for like a more matte tone green without the sequins. Y'all know I hate sequin shadows. So this is what she looks like. But it's a project for another day, y'all. I'm going to leave it out though to remind me that I need to change the shade out and take it to my grandma's house. As usual, finding ideas within palettes. So next I have the Sugar Crystals from Violet Voss. I recently did a look with this alongside another palette and it looks stunning. I think I did it alongside the Sugar and Grunge palette that I just showed y'all, but this is what she looks like on the inside. I've used this a couple of times this week. I used this on and had another shimmer on top of it and I think I used this and put another shimmer on top of it and it looked stunning. Like I love the color of this palette. I love the formula of this palette. I feel like Violet Voss doesn't get as much hype as it used to, but that doesn't mean it has any less quality when it comes to their stuff. I meant to show this palette when I showed Mel Thompson's bundle. This is the Tropicolor palette from Tina the Fancy Face and Sydney Grace. 
this is the only other Sydney Gray stuff I own besides the um collection with Tim Talia. So I only buy their collab palettes because that's when you get to see fun pops of color. Otherwise, I feel like they don't really put color in their palettes, which is why I don't really gravitate for the brand. It has nothing to do with the brand itself. It's just if you're not giving a color I need, girl, I can't be bothered because y'all know I live for color. I need color. Color is a requirement of my life. So Tina says she tried to keep this palette true to them, but at the same time still putting some color because she knows that you know her followers live for color and love color like she does. So I think she did a good job with it because I got a good majority of colors in here, but you still get some neutrals to do everyday looks with. So it's like a more versatile palette, if you will. Now we're going to get into palettes that have a couple. I have two or maybe three from the brand. And then I'll get into the ones that I have a good majority of. And then I'm going to stop at a certain point and film the rest of this another time. Because, honey, it's like 12 in the morning. I'm tired. I went to go see the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles with Adrian Game Over. So this is the Lily palette. This is what it looks like on the inside. I love the shade right here. It reminds me of the shade, um, if you see it in the mirror. Sorry. Yeah, see how it's two different shades. Like, it looks red this way but in the mirror it looks totally different so anyway it's, it's really similar to the shade sprinkle from the um cosmic brushes new palette that they came out with i would like the color store of this palette this is actually um a really nice quality palette if i had to recommend a palette i recommend this one i have the apocalypse one as well i think i showed it when i was at my grandma's house but one of the shades is broken so i want to pull it out and then possibly have to pick up the shade from when it breaks so we're not going to show that um, I have the Aloha palette. Y'all saw me recently do a video on this one, so I'm not hiding this one. The Mer and I have the mermaid one. So I actually have like four palettes from this brand, which I'm shocked about me having so many. But I caught this one on 30% off during the owner's birthday. So I ended up picking it up then. It was okay. I made a couple of nice looks with it. Um, on sale, I like it just fine, but at regular price, I don't know that I would necessarily buy it. I told y'all that in the video, though. But it's given me a couple of nice looks, so <coughs> there's that. Next, I have my last little set of BH Cosmetics palettes, and y'all should know what they are. Of course, they are the Sweet Shop collection, because this was the best collection they had ever come out with. And the funny thing is, I was hesitant to buy this one, but then I saw it at Ulta, and I had coupons and free money. So I was like, let me go ahead and just buy it. So this is Sherry on top. To me, it's giving a smaller version of the uh, monochromatic palettes from ColourPop. As far as color story, because y'all know with those, you get nine. With this one, you only get eight. So that's Sherry on top. Then I have cotton candy. I meant to put this in my um, Barbie core video and I forgot. But this is what she looks like. As you can see, it gives you a nice pink and purple moment. But I guess I should be glad I didn't because you only get these two pinks and everything else is purple. And, you know, Barbie's supposed to be known for pink, not purple. So, But I love that color story right there. Bubble gum. Y'all know I love me a blue moment. I love this dark blue in here. And I love these unique shimmers. Like this shimmer sweet tooth is one of my favorites to use in here along with frozen. So I really like this for when I want a certain like blue look. Because I feel like they gave a decent amount of uniqueness when it came to the blues in their palette. Even though I feel like ColourPop still does it best. But this shade right here is what makes this palette special to me. That one. And then this super deep blue that looks like it's um almost like a blackened blue. Last we have Pistachio. This is actually my least favorite one. I don't know what it is about this one. I'm just not that impressed with it. Like the greens in here just don't do it for me the way other things do. I like this shade Nutty right here. But otherwise, I'm not too impressed. And Sweet Life is okay. But, you know, it has a couple of shades in it that makes it unique and fun and makes me like it. But it's like it's not anything in it that makes me love it. While I'm like, oh my God, yes, I need that just based upon that. So, okay, let's get into... Playing and Makeup by Yolando. I don't have that many palettes from the brand. If you all remember, I have decluttered some. She reformulated and redid some. And I bought them again and still didn't like them. So I got rid of them. But these are the ones I did like that I held on to. So this is the Paint Me Chrome palette. If you all remember, I compared this to the Plain Jane palette from Adept Cosmetics. And I gave y'all a whole look comparing the two. You gotta like each palette for different reasons. I told you all my reasons. I'll try to remember to link the video up above here when i talked about um why i liked the adept one versus why i liked this one but both of them i like obviously or else i wouldn't keep both of them but you know this is what she looks like i had one that ended up having some mold in it that kind of freaked me out and i was like concerned because i was like there was mold in the shadows and i had to um scratch it out and i was like ho 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 like not on my ass so this is jam rock no limitation i really like this one this was the first one i bought i think i bought this one was 50 percent off when she was moving from um new york to uh atlanta and she had a 50 percent off deal on all her palettes that way she didn't have to take her stock with her and i fell in love when i tried this palette like i love this color story y'all know this is like my grungy fantasy and i just live for it so 
this was the um, first palette that I tried and fell in love with the brand for. I have the Jamrock 2 Matte Palette. I recently did looks at this. I really like the mattes in here and like the color she chose for the mattes. I feel like some are really similar like this one. And this one looks like they're like that much slight of difference. And a couple other ones like this pink and this pink here. So some of them look pretty similar and some of them look you know, like somewhat different. But I still like the palette as a whole and I think she did a good job with it. And the colors were exactly with that. I have the Vigorously one. I told y'all this is a good alternative for the Ice Cream Dream palette. If you don't want to buy from Glamline, you can buy this one. And it's giving Brown Griffin version of that one. I feel like it has some deeper tones in it. And since the shades in the Glamline palette oxidize, oxidize anyway, they don't necessarily look the way they should. But I feel like the ones in here do look true to tone. Now, I am confused about how many greens there are in here. Like this green, this green, and this green. All three of those greens look the same to me. So, that was my only issue with this. But otherwise, I like the color story. I like the way the look turned out. And gorgeous palette. Last one I have to talk about from Planet Makeup by Yolanda is the Relentless palette. This is what she looks like on the inside. I don't remember what my 777 palette has. I think I left it in my grandma's house to compare to the new palette from, um, what do you call them that's coming out? Who are they? Um, the new uh, Glaminatrix palette that's coming out, so I believe that's why it's not here. Don't quote me. But this is what it looks like on the inside. Like, I love how it has these big, giant dual combs over here and then all these like nice matte shades and the co um color coordination behind it, i think it's really nice so that's the last plan to make about yolanda when i have now we're gonna get into my cosmic brushes i only have a couple of them here i had to take one away with me so this is the cosmic delights palette i don't remember if i showed it or not but this is what she looks like as you can see the shade is shifting so hard before i show it so that's what it looks like it's stunning it's gorgeous i think it's really nice then there's the Muse palette. To me, this one is more for um, fall. I feel like it'll give you some gorgeous fall looks. I actually made a look in the summertime now because I was inspired to do so with the palette. So this is what we're working with. I think she looks stunning and I can't wait to pull this out for fall because, honey, it's giving and I'm living. And it'll definitely be in my um, fall palette recommendations video. I got a couple of palettes from, what's this brand called? Um, made by Mitchell. This is the Feet on the Ground palette. This is my favorite palette from the first two palettes he came out with this is what it looks like on the inside with me i feel like his color stories are always scattered when it comes to his palettes and how he um puts them together so a lot of times i'm confused on what to do like the one i left from my grandma's house the head on the cloud i have no idea what to do with that palette a lot of times i have stared at it for a while try to come up with color combinations whereas with this one i didn't have to do that as much so i liked it a little bit better now i feel like the random green yellow and orange kind of throw me off with it but otherwise it looks like you know it's easier to work with so I think that's why I like this one a little bit better than that one. Plus, it just seems like a color story. It's more of my alley and not as scattered. Next, we have the Do You Want Some Milk palette. With this one, I feel like the color story is a little off too. But if you look at it closely, I feel like it's just like the little set here is neutral. With like this weird pop of green. Then you got this nice little sunset section right here. And then you got like some pops of blue to go with it. So with this one, it was much easier for me to come up with looks with. I came up with two eye looks for a video for you all. I will say the shimmers in here actually feel really rubbery and weird. So I don't know what's going on with that. And after that, like I bought the mangoes one. And I didn't like that one either. So after that, I kind of just stopped buying its palettes. Because I was like, there's too many palettes I'm trying that I don't like from this brand. So I need to just like calm down and stop. Now, let's get into some Adept Cosmetics. Y'all know I love me some Adept Cosmetics. Now, there are going to be some Adept Cosmetics palettes missing. Like, I don't have the Aero Inspired palette here because I have to compare it to the new um, Laminatrix palette when it comes out. Because I feel like it has similar vibes. So, I don't have it here. But this is the Codeine palette. This is what she looks like. This was limited edition. It does not exist anymore. You cannot get it anymore, unfortunately. I do feel like it's really nice. When I need a hot pink, I usually think of this palette to come and grab for that shade. And this shade right here is really nice, too. So, I reached into this of their palettes literally just for some shimmers sometimes because I just love Adept's shimmers that much. Next, I have the Minka palette. This is what she looks like on the inside. As y'all can see, these are stunning. And as you can see, I've been using the crap out of Luna and Selena. I use Linda on occasion, and I like the shade Minka, too and cora sometimes so i use a good amount of this palette i feel like golds and purples look really nice together and i really just love to use the shade right here and selena has some gorgeous shades to work with and it's just a gorgeous palette to have in my collection and i like to pair it with anhydrin anhydrin is not here because i'm making a video on that as well so you will not see it today but you will see my plain jane this is the original plain jane i bought the original one and then i just bought the anniversary shades to put separately together with this palette when she released the anniversary one and then there's the remastered one so this 
one has come out two or three different times but this is what it looks like i think she looks stunning and i'm happy to have it in my collection i do reach for this one time from time to time too because like i said i like to reach for certain shimmers out of certain palettes when i'm doing certain eye looks and i feel like the other shimmers that are in the palette just aren't giving enough oomph for me so we have the heather austin and the depth cosmetics palette if you all remember i wasn't crazy about the formula of this they had nothing to do with the color store it's just like i don't know what it was about the formula of the mattes i feel like it wasn't the same as their normal matte formula and i wasn't necessarily a fan of it because the color story is gorgeous it's just i don't know it's something about this palette that i just can't get down with and i feel horrible but you know i still keep it because i love it down. the last adept palette i have to talk about is the seahorse palette y'all know this one was an arm and a leg but to me it was worth every penny i love it i have used it so much throughout the summer i've used it at least four or five times and y'all know how many palettes i own so for me not to be for me to be using it that much and i have all these other palettes to deal with you know it's got to be good honey i love it i'm living for it she usually has been doing sales on it for 25 percent off so i definitely think it's a good deal but if you want to wait till black friday i am mad at you because it was a pretty pin and i was like ooh, mm. <laughs> about it i was just like i don't know i don't know but um it was definitely worth it it was worth every single cent and i would buy it again in a heartbeat there is no shame in my game okay okay let's pull out all my wooden's eye palettes now so let's start with these so i have the giant wolves for next makeup corner this is the only one i have shaped like this the rest of them are shaped differently because you're yeah, all tina's palettes at my grandmother's house for the video i just told you all about so this is what it looks like on the inside i feel like it's a nice little blue purple and i guess shushish pinkish type moment and then you get a nice grungy set at the top so it's getting this nice fun colors at the bottom and the nice grungy smoky eye at the top that's beautiful when it comes to the nets palette i love this palette to the point where i think i have two of a nets palette along with two of teens palette don't quote me but i know i got two of teens palette for sure next i have the soman 2 palette i got rid of my original soman palette funny story um the first palette i ever bought from them was the soul mom palette and i had a lot of people tell me i was the first black person they saw uh, reviewing wooden's eye so i was glad to know that i uh, let was um letting my peers be aware and know that you know it, it works on darker skin since a lot of people hadn't really been investing or trying to buy anything from the brand but this is the soul mind 2 palette i like the color story okay y'all know i'm not crazy about orange so i wasn't necessarily excited about the bottom row but the first two rows were okay but you know ended up turning out and working out nicely for me i made a nice eye look using it and another palette i don't know which palette it was but i did use another palette with it and it looked stunning and i got lots of compliments on that eye look so next we have the jewels and gem palette this is from their collection from this year this is what it looks like on the inside. To me, this is definitely a unique take on a mauve tone palette, which I appreciate because it has this nice little grungy section at the bottom. Because I feel like if you cover this up, it would just be your everyday palette. I feel like a lot of people are taking um, notes from Huda because I feel like this just reminds me of a funner version of the Rose Quartz palette. Because you got this unique shade down here at the bottom and this unique shade down here. And then the shimmers look more intensely and sparkly than the Huda's do. But, you know. Mmm with that information what you will next i have the stone and rock palette this is what she looks like on the inside this definitely gives me the vibes of like gemini and when i saw it i immediately thought of gemini but i do love the shade high spirits and the shade um frenzy i love both of them so much and i'm just like yes i am obsessed with those two shades the rest of the shades look nice as well but those are the two to just call on me as soon as i look at this palette i always want to use those shades and it is a stunning palette and I actually would wish for it over my Gemini if I talked to y'all about using your Gemini palettes instead. But I just feel like it's something special about the old Zai shimmers. Next, I have the Flora Story palette. This is makeup just for fun or Amanda and Uden Zai's palette. So to me, this is a great um, palette to use in combination with the Hella palette from Angelica Nikovic and Uden Zai. I feel like those are great palettes to use together because angie's has the pink and some nice little burgundy shades to put on the bottom and then you get these nice purples from here along with some greens to go with angie's green so i feel like they're just like a match made in heaven i usually use them together i rarely if ever use that palette by itself next we have the sea talk palette i feel like the sea talk palette pairs good with annette's makeup corners palette this is what it looks like on the inside i feel like if you cover up the two middle shades it's just uh, nothing but like a palette with a pop of blue because see when you cover those up 
all you see is a palette with a pop of blue in it so it's nice to have some fun shades in it because otherwise i feel like it'd just be quite boring but i like to pair this with annette's palette because i feel like it gives a nice little look to the eyes next we have the hella palette the one i was talking about with angelica nikovich and wouldn't i and see what i'm talking about when i say these like deeper tones at the bottom and the pinks i feel like those go nicely with the purples that are in the flora palette and at the same time the ones at the top the orange and sorry not orangey the green and the yellowish green shades at the top i feel like we'll go nicely with that palette so that's why i like to pair these together but angie's palette i just use alone or pair whereas with the flora palette i always feel like i should pair it with something so next we have the merry christmas palette these people were so upset that they didn't get their hands on. And this is another reason I told y'all you might not necessarily need to get the um, stone and well, the stone and rock palette. Because if you cover this up, Odin's eye does a lot of greens. Because you have greens in there. And if I had covered up Angie's palette, you'd have seen there more greens in there. So they do quite a few greens. So I felt like it wasn't necessarily needed for you to get that palette. Just because, you know, they do so many greens. It's like, child, do you really need it? I don't feel like you really need it. Next, we have the Christmas Eve palette. Plus, if you have the um, Poison Apple from Unearthly Cosmetics, you didn't need it because, like, it's a really similar color to it. But here is what the Christmas Eve palette looks like. I feel like if you have the Nomad Cosmetics, what is it, the, um, what's the Snow Lot, then you don't necessarily need this palette either because they have a lot of similar tones in it. Now, it doesn't have the purples in it. It has, like, a red and a black instead, but it still has, um, you know... And similar enough color story in my personal opinion where you can get similar looks you're just not gonna have those purples that are in this palette in that palette and i think this yellow is shade right here but otherwise it looks pretty similar i even did an eyeshadow look comparing both of them when this first came out to make people feel better who didn't get their hands on it or get their hands on it when it restocked last one i have is the norns palette from Uten's Eye. now they have re um packaged and used a new formula creating this palette so i during black friday i plan on picking it up because the shimmers down here are amazing i really like that shimmer up there too pink chameleon and since their formula is really nice and this was a nice color store i feel like the new formula would be even better so i want to compare the old one to the new one even though i know it's going to be better but you know i forget some people might be interested so i'll probably do a video on that but that's what that looks like okay y'all we got three more sets of palettes to go through and then I'm going to be done filming for tonight. And then I will come back another day. And we'll eventually get this done. Because it's still like half a palette. Uh, half a drawer full of palettes. And it's like a full, like big drawer. There's a bunch of palettes in it. Now we're going to move on to Ace Butte. We have the Ace Butte Envy palette. This is what she looks like on the inside. If you've wanted a miniature version of the Oceanic palette that you'll see a little bit later. Then I feel like this would be a good alternative for you. Because you don't have to have such a big palette with so many blues in it. Although this gives you more of the grungy version of the um, Oceanic palette. It doesn't give you the bright and fun colors. So if you wanted the bright and fun colors, you should probably head and go ahead and get Oceanic. If you wanted more of like the grungier, deeper tones that are in Oceanic. Then I feel like this could be a good alternative for you. And it's going to be more affordable because it's smaller. And you can use cold cage makeup for this as well as Odin's eye. Next, we have the Aura palette. Here's what she looks like on the inside. If you liked the feel of the, what is it, the province palette, but you didn't necessarily like the fact that the, all the colors are brighter, this to me is a grungier version of that. Or this seems like it could be a miniature version of the Palladopoly palette from Ace Butte. Since some people didn't like that, you might like this version a little bit better. But I like both of them just fine. That's why I ended up buying both of them because I thought both the color stories are great. I feel like Uden's Eye does a great story, does a great job of coming up with color stories for their palettes. That's one thing I feel like they always did good. And once they upped the formula and made it to where more people liked it, I feel like they just had a hole in one and they were just on their way. As they have been. So next we have the ambiance palette. This is what it looks like on the inside. If you need a dupe for the ColourPop um, Good Sport palette, this is it right here. I feel like this is such a good alternative to the Good Sport palette from ColourPop. Now all the shades aren't exactly the same. Like the purple in the ColourPop one is matte. Whereas you can see this one is shimmer. So like little nuances like that or little small things like that are what you're going to notice when it comes to this palette versus you're a good sport palette, but if you don't necessarily care about that and you just wanted a good majority of the shades to be similar, then I feel like this could be a good alternative for you. Because I know mine is getting up there in years when I swatch shades, they're like gritty and disgusting. I'm like, since ColourPop want to bring everything back that they came up with this year, but not bring back the good stuff like good sport, you know, like I got to find some alternatives for us girls, okay? So next I have the Ace Butte Flare palette. This is what she looks like on the inside. 
I think she's absolutely stunning. I love that they have this row of blues and greens. And you got this nice little um, warm tone row for people who like warm tones. And then you have this um, purple. And this will be working with. This is one of the first palettes I bought from the brand. Because I just thought the color sort was so nice. And I'm glad to have it in a form I prefer. Next, we have the Oceanic palette. This is what she looks like. And now you see what I'm saying about the grungier version from the... Um, the envy palette you see this little corner right here this is what i was referring to when i said buying the envy palette if you prefer that whereas if you have this lighter tone if you prefer these lighter tones right here then you would prefer to have obviously the oceanic palette because the um envy palette isn't going to have those colors but either one is nice and i like having both because i feel like it's just an extension to the um oceanic palette for shades that are missing out of it so next i have the tropical vibes palette as y'all can see my shades just broken to pieces i don't know what it is about their palettes but the last two i had got recently like showed up broken so i don't know what's going on like as y'all can see this one's cracking right here this one has cracked this one is just completely gone so when they have a sale on black friday i'm just going ahead and buy another one because i'm like you know one of the most prettiest shades showed up broken and then it keeps breaking and breaking so i'm just like i just i just really don't want to be bothered i just give it to my cousins or something they can figure it out because i'm like i just can't be bothered and hopefully it doesn't show up broken to me again but that's what she looks like next i have the smoky rose palette so i ended up buying this off somebody off macari because my girl Karen Harris is talking about how wonderful it was. And this is definitely up my alley when it comes to like neutral tones that I would wear. Only thing is I'm feeling like these two shades look really similar. And these two shades looking a little too close for me. But I do like the color story of this. I'm not liking the fact that the black is shimmery. And I'm just like, ugh. But you know, that's just, you know, a thing right there. But you know, I like the formula. I like the way the palette works for me. I have used it a couple of times and it looks on Instagram. But I didn't actually let you all see me use it on youtube because i had got it so far afterwards so i didn't want anybody um trying to hunt it down if they restock it then i'd be willing to give you a look if you want but next we have the palette palette as you can see my pink is breaking right there so every hp tape palette or the last two or three hp tape palettes i had got last year were breaking but i love the color story of this and now you see what i mean about it being similar to the aura palette like these shades right here and right in here and like the green right there i feel like are definitely giving the aura palette vibe so if you didn't care about having the blues and the bright pinks then i feel like the aura palette might be good for you but this is a stunning color story i love the way this palette looks and this is actually one of my favorite hp tape palettes that i have tried in a while so let's pack these little bad boys up real quick and cute like and get them out the way because we got two more sets of palettes to do and then i will be done for the night show oh you're done right now and then you'll be done for the night after you do one more. I said two and they can hear you. Thanks. Oh. I thought you were done. So yeah, next we have the Nomad Royal Europe palette. This is what it looks like on the inside. I mean on the outside. On the inside, as y'all know, I love this palette for the dual chromes. I like the fact that it's giving like that grungy jewel tone vibe, if you will. And then all these um, multi chromes or dual chromes, whatever you like to call them. I love that about and for this palette. It's giving I'm living. Yes, give it to me. So this is what she looks like. I did at least two to three to four looks with that palette. And y'all know that's a big deal because like I said, I don't get to use lots of palettes or I don't try to repeat lots of palette use because I have lots of videos to make. But the fact that I use so many, I was very impressed. Next, we have the, what is it, um, Ice and um, Fire palette from Nomad. This used to be my favorite palette from the brand until um, they had the colorful palettes that came out. This was the closest thing they had to my sort of color. As you can see, I got my blues. They got the little warm tone one, but you got your smoky moment. And then you got some fun pops of color to put in the inner corner or put on the lid, these three right here. So that's why I loved it when I first got it because they hadn't come up with a whole bunch of other stuff. So next we have the province palette that i was talking about earlier that's what she looks like on the inside if you already have the dominique cosmetics um lemonade palette then i feel like you don't necessarily need this palette because that's all this is this is her palette and then they just added like this little section here on this blue um smoky section if you will but i know the formula on my palette wasn't that great like the shimmers were hard pressed in the pan the mattes were fine it was just the shimmers that were hard pressed and the shimmers were the colors that i liked the most so i was disappointed in that so i was happy to have this palette as alternative since that palette didn't work out the way i hoped it would but it's a gorgeous color story i know a lot of people don't like it but i actually really like the color story 
one I didn't think I would like to actually do is the Hudson Valley palette. And if you look at it, you see why it's mainly a warm tone palette. It has a couple of cool tone moments in it, but it doesn't have, like, to me, a lot of shimmers that go with the cool tones. I feel like this one green shimmer is supposed to go with all these cool tones. And then this red and orange is supposed to go with all these warm tones. And I'm not a warm tone person, so I was kind of just like, hmm, I'm not really that impressed. But okay, I'm glad y'all made it or whatever, I guess. That's how I felt about it. I'm going to save my two favorite ones for last. Now, this is the one I got from my girl, Dion Loves Makeup. This year, you can use code Dion for all your nomad purchases this is the valentine's palette they came out with so when i saw it i was like hmm, that's interesting i feel like it's just like the one i showed you all from bh cosmetics to me this is like the cherry on top palette or the um what the cherry palette from um who is it a color pop and then this is just like a nice little cool tone section and it's a reminds me of a palette i just can't remember the name of the palette right now so i was just kind of like mm. i know the shimmers in here were really hard pressed and i wasn't necessarily crazy or a fan about that so that's why i was just kind of like huh mm. whatever but next we have the nomad cosmetics haunted europe palette this is what she looks like on the inside. You got your nice warm tone, cool tone moment here as well. You got the nice blues and the purple. And you have the nice um, greens and warm tone side here. I like both the sides of the palette, but y'all know I'm usually more onto this side. I do like this little section right here, but it's a nice palette overall. You can't get this one anymore, though, if I remember correctly. This was limited edition for Halloween last year. I'm curious to see what they're going to do for Halloween of this year, and I'm very excited. Um... We're down to two more Nomad palettes, then I got to do Beauty Bay, and then we'll be done for the night. Next, I have the Nomad, what is this? Paradise palette, Paradise Islands palette. If y'all remember, I liked the color story of it, but it's more of a, like, you know, mid-tone palette, which is more of a companion palette for me. So, when they came up with the Costa Rica palette after this, I was super excited, because with this one, I wasn't going to be able to do a lot of looks on its own. I mean, I tried to use these two as outer V-shades, but they weren't giving as much as I needed them to give, so I was kind of just like... Hmm. but i do like the palette as a whole to me it's just like a companion palette i have to stick with other colorful palettes in my collection which isn't too bad and i was okay with it because at the end of the day at least it was colorful next we have the costa rica palette i was talking about now this one to me i love to pair with the one i just showed you the paradise islands because i mean like this color story is just amazing and everything to me i absolutely love it they give us our first dual chrome shade this one right here and I was here for it. I was loving it before they came out with the um, what is it, Royal Europe palette. This is my favorite one. If I had to pick a top five from Nomad, I was thinking about doing a video on that. You can comment down below and tell me if you're interested or not. But I think I did. I don't think I've done a top ten favorite favorite palettes from the brand just because I don't think I have ten palettes from the brand. I'm not 100 percent sure though. I haven't looked into it. Let's get into the last palettes of the night, y'all. This is. From the brand Beauty Bay. Y'all know I love Beauty Bay, so I got a few there. So, let's start off with the one that started off. For me, the Book of Magic. I feel like this started off for a lot of us. Everybody loved the Book of Magic. It was so exciting. But the Midnight Palette actually looks really similar to this. It just doesn't have all the neutral tones that are in this palette. So, a lot of people like me who like color prefer that one. But I was like, since I already have this one, I didn't feel the need to like, you know necessarily had that one i did end up getting the midnight palette though just because i know you all wouldn't be able to get this but i wasn't going to declutter this since i already had it so that's sometimes the struggle of being a youtuber you have to have two or three of the same thing so you can use one on camera that people have and use other ones that they don't even though there's a, i think four or five shades in this one that are in the midnight palette but you know since they're so affordable it wasn't as big a deal to me next we have the wilderness palette this one to me reminds me of vita and morte i feel like this is a good alternative if you didn't get vita and morte when it came out but morte has since come back out but i heard the formula is not the same so i was kind of disappointed about that but you know hmm. anyway i love the color story of this palette i mainly love the top two rows as y'all know because y'all know me but the two bottom rows are nice as well and it's just a great color story as a whole so i had to have in my collection especially for the affordable price it came out like super um quick and then it sold out super quick so I'm glad to have it in my collection. Next, we have the Age of Opulence. I think I like the Age of Opulence a little bit more than Book of Magic, believe it or not. Just because I like how much more jewel toned and vibrant the colors are in this palette. I feel like they just give something extra that the Book of Magic doesn't give. So, I was definitely had to have this one in my collection. And they always manage to sneak some neutrals in here. I guess for people who still want to be able to use the palette on an everyday basis. I'm assuming that's why they sneak all the neutrals in all the time. But I just prefer to have all the color. But whatever. 
Next, we have the New Romance palette. This was their Valentine's Day palette from 2021, I want to say. Because I'm pretty sure Love Notes was for 2022. I like the color story of this one, but I love Love Notes. To me, this is like their version of the Natasha Denona Love palette. A more affordable version without all of, you know, the cream to um, powder formula of mattes and the special shimmers and all that. But I really like the color story. I think it's nice, and I'm happy to have it in my collection. Next, we have the Dark Fantasy palette. This is what she looks like. Of course, y'all know I'm not showing the black sequin shade at the top. But otherwise, I think this is a unique and fun color story. I kind of think about taking this compared to the, um, what's that palette called? The, um, the Sugar and Spice palette from Glaminatrix. I think I'm going to have to put this aside and take that to compare to that. So, we'll see about that. But, yeah. She's a stunning palette. And I'm happy to in my collection i love collecting beauty bay palettes because they're so affordable the quality is actually really good and they usually have unique color stories so next we have the new mod this is what it looks like i definitely thought this was a funny unique color story because it gave you like that classic um blue and brown like palette look that people were doing a while ago but then it gave you this little weird fun colorful corn over here and i was like okay okay i see you and it looks like it's just nice little sets of quads if you look at it because it's like a six pan quad and it's a four pan quad and it's a four pan quad and it's a six pan quad so it's like if you look at their palettes like that sometimes i feel like it's easier for you to digest and figure out a color story but i like the color story of this one the last one i have to talk about is the retro love palette and all my palettes are 20 pans if you haven't realized that by now this is a nice little pastel palette i think i'm gonna take this com to compare to the um sugar and spice palette as well but i really like the color story of this palette and again i just look at this in like little quads or whatever to help me cover what i look when i can't figure out what to come up with because the last two palettes i showed you all were to me kind of unique and weird but when you look at it in quad form it's not as bad like see this little pink quad right here that's six this little quad right here that's four a little blue quad right here and then you have this little four pink quad right here or you can just add these and make a blue smoky eye so Okay, y'all, be right back with more. Okay, y'all, so we on the home stretch now. I got, like, I think four piles sitting around me and then we're done. So, this is the Laminatrix Into the Night palette. I'm still waiting on the Sugar and Spice palette to show up, but this was the latest one they came out with before that one. As you can see, it is just a fun version of Mothership 3 by Pat McGrath. So, if you like Mothership 3, I feel like you would like this palette, especially if you like color, because as you can see, you get fun pops of colors that are mattes not just like shimmers the way mother likes it in so this is a gorgeous palette and i'm glad to have it in my collection next we have the glamorous palette i don't know if i showed this or not if i did my bad this is what she looks like on the inside i feel like i didn't know because i had did a video at my grandmother's house with it and that's why i wasn't here in the drawer with the rest of the stuff so i guess i get the rest of the Glaminatrix out of the way i've got to figure out where i put it though but this is the other one i have this one wasn't what i wasn't crazy about at first when i first got it but once i realized you just put the shimmers over mattes and you should be fine then I was cool with it. I didn't see anything you wasn't supposed to see. I'm sitting here without pants on and a mirror just flung my way. So my bad. Hopefully it's not too bad. I'm trying to sit to where I don't knock over the tripod. But I don't want to knock over all these kind of CDs the whole thing. But anyway. So next we have the natural new new, new <laughs> nearly natural palette. If you all can see it um gives vibes of Manny and Lord Manny and Laura's palette. Minus the um fun blue um purple shifting shade and the like aubergine type shade i feel like the majority of them same these it has like one of those greenish khaki shades that they had in their palette so if you want a good alternative if this is still available on the site you should go ahead and grab it she did discontinue this one though so i don't know if this will be available by the time this video goes up probably not but if you have it that's just a reminder that even when the black friday sales come you don't need to buy laura manny's now i might buy laura manny's just to compare the quality and whatnot i told y'all if it goes on sale for a good deal i was gonna buy it so i didn't lie and i'm telling you go like it is next i have these two palettes from gourmand girls these are the only two palettes i have i love doodles by the bunny i've been following her on you sorry instagram for years so when her palettes came out initially this was the first one she came out with i wasn't really a huge fan of this color story just because i feel like it gives lots of neutral and very little color and y'all know how i'm about, about color like you only get this one two shades of color i guess you can count this one but i feel like this one's more of like a grungy -ish, um green that is for people who want to dabble in color but don't really love color like to me these are the two colors that really are for color lovers so that's why i didn't rush out to get this palette because i saw it as majority neutrals with pops of color kind of like you know the pat mcgrath 
palette but since she gave us a lot of colorful masks and once i was happy with that so that's why i bought it immediately but this one i held off on till this nightshade palette came out and i've been using this quite a bit i think i used like three or four times when i first got it which is a huge deal but i've been pairing it with other palettes all i think i paired it with all um other palettes all week for one week and just use this palette alone on its own so this is what all the colors look like in the palette i love this shade right here and this shade right here in particular i think they have the greatest prettiest shifts to them the other stuff in the palette works pretty nicely i get a really nice look out of it for my um what is my um instagram pictures and for my youtube video so i like the palette as a whole it's just those two shimmers in particular all i always ones i want to reach for so i figured i'd point them out as loves so next i have all of my sigma palettes so believe it or not i actually have quite a few sigma palettes even though I don't use them that often, but this is the Untamed palette. This one to me reminds me of their version of, um, what is that palette called? Subculture from ABH. That's what this palette gives me vibes of for sure. So of course y'all know I had to grab it because I had a somewhat unique color store. And I feel like they played safe into like a lot of warm tones and a lot of neutral. So the one time they pulled out a fun palette, I was like, sign me up, I will buy it. And I sure did. And the quality in their palettes is actually really good. I feel like people just usually know them for brushes, so they don't think about anything else. This is the Corda Rosa palette. My girl Karen Harris is the one who convinced me to get this palette. Because y'all know I don't usually do warm tones, but she did such a pretty look with it. So I was like, I guess I can get it. And y'all know Sigma always has amazing deals on stuff. And then I, you can use code. I think her code is Karen10 or Karen at um, Sigma. Don't quote me, but um, you can use her code and get a discount on this palette. I think it's a pretty palette. Um... It's not what I reach for that often, as y'all know, I'm not into warm tones, but I did think the quality was good and it was a really nice color story. The one <clears throat> that I like are usually the Disney ones. Like, I like this Cinderella one that they, Sigma did with Disney. I really like the color story of this, but y'all know this is more my thing. Like, I got a cute little blue quad here. I got a cute little purple quad here. And then I got, like, this whole little neutral, mauve rosy, rosy, smoky eye section. So that's what I look at that one as. And I think it's a great color story. I don't reach for that one as often. I feel like I reach for the Alice in Wonderland. You'll see in a second a little bit later. This is the new mod. This is more of my type of color story. Y'all know I live for a mauve moment. And this new mod palette is definitely that. I feel like they tried to channel their inner ABH with this like velvet situation here or whatever. But this is what the color story looks like on the inside. To me, it gives more like a mauve pink tone version of what's that palette called um the hooded beauty rose quartz that kind of like the vibe it gives me looking at it like it has the fun sparkly shade like they have in there but it still has like the purplish type mauve tones to it i feel like this was if the what is it the new nude palette and rose quartz were combined together like that's the vibe it gives me if you all remember, like, New New was the first palette I bought from Huda Beauty. Where was I? Oh, yeah. So, we on the Glam Light Part 2 palette from Michaela. This is what it looks like on the inside. If you want a good alternative to the Milk Cookie Palette from Milk, because the Milk is kind of expensive. This one is definitely more on the affordable side. It has a similar color story. Not exact. To me, this is more true green. Whereas that one has the green and then the teal and, like, well, not teal, I should say. More like mint. And I guess you could say a little bit of teal too, but this is a nice alternative to that and it's more affordable. You can you used to be able to find this collection at CVS. I don't know if you still can or not, but you know. It's a cute palette. I end up keeping it around just because I feel like it's a good alternative for that. And when I want to go on vacation, obviously I want to take my expensive milk, so that's a good alternative to take. Next we have the Creeps and Crawls palette. This is the first Scooby-Doo collection. The second Scooby-Doo collection, unfortunately, is not here because I had to uh, take it to my grandmother's house for film and I got some new ideas for videos. So when I get off work tomorrow, I'm going to film those. But look how gorgeous these are. Like, those metallics just shine. And then those mattes look so nice and dark and brushy. Now, unfortunately, I wasn't necessarily crazy about the formula in this collection in particular, but I can admit that it has gorgeous color stories to it. I think Batty Bean said she wasn't a huge fan of it either. But we're going to get into the palette that looks identical to hers in a minute. This, this one right here, Rutler Raggy. So, I'm trying to, um, I should have had a palette video tonight, y'all. Because I actually, believe it or not, want to declutter some stuff. So, even though I do comparisons for y'all, I feel like sometimes I have a little too much even for myself. So, this is what it looks like on the inside. And if you remember what Batty Bean's palette looks like, then you know why I said it looks really similar to that one. I mean, the color story is almost spot on to her color story. And I personally like the formula of the trial one better than I like the formula of this one. And if you all remember, I said I wasn't crazy about the shimmers in here. So there's that. So that's just my take on the situation. But let's get into our next set of palettes. So I got some more glam lights. I'm going to stick these in the corner. 
right here real quick and cute like so the starter with this frosted flakes palette now if y'all remember i told y'all i wasn't getting this they ended up having a sale and since angie said the form of this one was actually really good i went ahead and bought it so this is what she looks like on the inside i actually um i think i have another one of these i'm trying to i know i gave one of these away i believe in a giveaway that came up recently don't quote me i feel like i did though but this is what she looks like on the inside as y'all can see it's quite the blue palette but i'm not really a huge fan of oranges so that's why i was kind of just like i have it i'm glad i have it i think the form is really nice but since it has like the oranges it kind of doesn't you know i get that much use out of me because i have so many blue palettes but it's still a great form if you're interested and you don't have that many blues in your collection because blue and orange does go nicely together next we have the margarita palette this is my least favorite out of all the palettes in this collection i will think about decluttering it i just hate to support the collection Yes, I do have a collector's mentality on some things, and Glam Light is one of those brands, so I'm like, I kind of don't want to separate it, even though I don't really like this that much, but I feel like it could be a good companion palette to a lot of the other colorful ones that don't have necessarily airbrush shades I need, so that's why I always end up keeping this around, because y'all know Glam Light will make you a colorful palette in a minute, and then it'll have different rainbow tones or some similar rainbow tones, so I like the fact that this one has some of these lighter tones in it, so that's why I'm keeping it, just because, you know, I can use it as an airbrush palette with other palettes next we're going to talk about the three i do like so this is the wine palette y'all know i am a say it with me now purple palette connoisseur so needless to say i had to have this palette in my collection because she's gorgeous and she's purple and has unique purples y'all know every time i talk about it but i love this purple shade right here i think it's so unique and fun and then this one other shade in here i think i like what is it no this is the one i mainly am obsessed with some of these other purples are really nice too but that's the one i like the most so Oh, this dark purple right here is really nice as well because it's a unique tone of dark purple, in my personal opinion, that I have not seen a lot of purple palettes. So, I'm here for it. It's a vibe. Love that palette. Next, I have the Dirty Martini palette. This is what she looks like on the inside. This is another good alternative to Smoke Sessions if you don't want to spend Smoke Session money because it has a little bit more of the true tones that Smoke Session has in it, like this one and this one right here, and then more like some nice greens and like the darker tones that are in Smoke Session. So if you want another alternative to Smoke Session that's not as neutral and a little bit more true to the green purple vibe of uh, Smoke Session, then I feel like the Dirty Martini would be good for you. So that's something to think about. I like the formula, but I think it's really nice, but um, you know, they've gotten even better since that formula. Last one I have is the Chocolate Martini. Now this one, I feel like it's a really good alternative for that new palette that came out from ace beauties in their floor collection that color that um neutral palette that they have i feel like this is a good alternative for that you get more shades in here it has a very similar color story in my personal opinion so if you're on the lookout and glam Light has a good deal on it because i know this sale has been going on sale frequently i think they're ready to like discontinue it out and move on because if i remember correctly this is a limited edition you might want to go ahead and grab this one instead even though the ace beauties one is pretty affordable you can use code cage makeup from karen at both of these websites if you were curious by the way but under that palette next i have the shroud cosmetics moonfall palette y'all know this is one of my favorite palettes of 2023 if you saw my video of best palette so far this was in it um can you tell she's well loved i mean look at that like chunks of shimmer are falling out like she has been she has been through the ringer child she is loved i love to pair this with um some other palettes in my collection that i feel like don't have deep enough tones in them matter of fact i think i've i've been meaning to pair this with their peaches and dream palette and i haven't gotten around to it yet so i'm definitely going to have to put both of these to the side soon and pair them together but she is stunning so they actually came out with a couple of palettes this year which i was shocked about because i feel like they don't come out with that much stuff so i don't know if they're trying to keep up more with the competition as far as coming out with more or these were just things she had in the works for a really long time and finally got done with but this is peaches and dreams one i was talking about that's what she looks like on the inside absolutely stunning amazing wonderful color story i love this color sucking it right here it gets me every time i just think it's stunning it looks like this one's trying to come out the pants so i might have to repress that but these are just some gorgeous shimmers i mean to me the shimmers are what stand out in here because the match i'm not saying they're bad it's just more because they're all mid-tone shades y'all know how i feel about mid-tones that's why i said i want to pair it with moonfall because there's not enough depth in here for me like I would do a blue and green eye, but this would have to be my crease shade. Maybe run this on the lower last line. And then that darker blue that was in the Moonfall palette, I have to put with and then put this with it. And maybe that in the inner corner or something. Like, there's not enough in here for me to do a look on its own. I did look on its own in the video, but I wasn't truly satisfied with it. Because the green shade that I had, had to use for the Outer V6 was one of the darker ones. was not dark enough. This is another palette from Trail. This is the Arcana palette. I think I showed y'all another colorful palette from... I think I showed y'all Creepy Cute too. I got rid of Creepy Cute, the original, and then the Divinity palette. I got rid of both of them. So I only have this Arcana palette left. But it's a nice split of warm tone and cool tone palettes. 
<coughs> excuse me i mean cool tone combination so this is what she looks like this was like the first palette that drew me to the brand truly while i was like yes i need that palette so she's a keeper and a classic for me okay let's get into these two um kaleidos palettes so this is the escape pod this is when they first came out with these giant weird packaging of palettes i don't know what's going on with them over there but they keep coming up with the same palette 50 times over in my personal opinion and i'm not here for it so this is what the palette looks like i like the color story of this okay um i don't know what's up with the random neutrals at the very bottom of it but otherwise the shimmers in here are intense and wonderful the mattes in here look really nice i didn't feel like we needed both of these or i mean i guess we could use both of these but you know some of the colors in here i just thought were weird combinations but i guess they were supposed to try to ground the palette with the neutrals that they did put in here i don't know but i like the palette well enough i don't think they make that one anymore either though they've gotten rid of all their fun colorful stuff and just started doing a whole bunch of neutrals because if y'all just saw them quads they came out with they look just like the quads they came out with like two times before i was like what are we what are we doing here this is of course my club nebula palette this is still my favorite palette from kaleidos like angie did that like, i try not to use it that often but um if i had to use uh, uh influencer palette for a really long time i could easily use angie's palette and be fine and y'all know i don't really like the orange and red combination but i feel like it works out nicely for me it looks nice whenever i do use this palette with that combination y'all know i'm more about these green blues and purples here but you get this nice row of purples then you got the blues and greens and the little warm tone section at the bottom so it's a nice palette overall this is still one of my all-time favorite youtuber collabs and I'm so glad i have my collection i tried not to be greedy and buy a backup but i was so tempted when they had the um when they put it back in stock but i was like let someone else get one don't buy another one or else i would be sitting on two of these and not be mad because i'm telling y'all i would use this so much more but i just try not to be out here using stuff people can't get no more because they be feeling some type of way about it okay on to the color pop palette so i have three of these big ones here and i think i have like two or three in my gummy test you all saw yeah i have three over there and i have three here so i have six in total wait no i have seven in total i forgot i got aura struck or the eight no it's eight because i have um getting fresh too so this is it's moved here let's open her up so if you all remember i redid my it's moves so mine looks like this yours isn't gonna look like this when you buy it from them it's gonna have pressed glitters and other stuff i took the pressed glitters out and then i added colors from it's my pleasure lie like you a lot and um ooh -la -la. that's where some of these shades came from so if i remember correctly this is from um my matter of fact i'm sorry i think this is from meant to be i know these purple this purple is from uh lie like you a lot this one is from it's my pleasure this pink is from just my luck sorry now this pink is from ooh la la and i'm trying to remember where this shade come from came from i'm not sure i want to say that came from it's my pleasure and it's just like a lighter shifting shade don't quote me but i still want to find a shade to get rid of this one but i mean it looks fine in the palette so that's why i just kind of let it stay like whatever but this is what it looks like and it's one of my favorite recreations of the bigger palettes i have of course y'all know i have so jaded it took me a while to get this out because i was like when it first came out i was like are people really gonna pay this price for a color pop palette because it was so huge but they did so i was like oh, okay i figured that's why they played it safe and put it with kathleen first as you can see i took my um press glitters out I think she only had two in here, but I took them out. Um, and I need to take the shade Neptune out. But otherwise, it's okay. I mean, I feel like it's kind of on the older side, so maybe I should just leave it alone because she's kind of old and I don't see her, you know, being used that much or whatever. But I still think I'd like to change the color story around, so I might. I might not. Depends on how I feel that day. But here's Play It Jewel. I did take some shades out of here. So, I've still been redoing this one. Like, I want to change the shade here to something else. Obviously, I wanted a more jewel tone, colorful palette as opposed to the It's Move, which I feel like is a brighter, um, colorful palette because play it jewel, you know, jewel tone. So, I'm still working on this one, but this is what she looks like for now. I'm thinking about just taking out this neutral row or this neutral row, but at the same time, I'm like, they're two different types of neutrals. So, I like this yellowish neutrals to go with some of the tones here, and then like, like this plain neutral, cool tone, neutral moment over here for when i want to do something different so i'm thinking i might keep them like that but i feel like with those palettes i'm forever changing them depending on whatever mood i'm in so it might be changed so this is the amari post sorry amora amari Posos palette 
for melt i ended up redoing mine if you all saw i did a whole eye look with it it shows you on my instagram that's why you need to follow gel beauty 87 on instagram because you get content there that you do not get here but this is what the inside of the palette looks like now that i changed it so i just took that as y'all know y'all laughed me when i told you this row of ash here i changed it out so i think this shade was up here so i put it down here i added these four shimmers here because i felt like they went nicely with the colorful jewel tone mattes that were in here and i like the look i came up with and i feel like i'm going to really like this palette a whole lot better and reach for it more now that it has more fun shimmers to it because that row of ash just was not doing it for me y'all it was not it was not so she had go i'm sorry she had go only thing is since this palette is bigger than all the other palettes they have like it doesn't fit in my drawers the rest of my milk palettes uh, nicely so i'm trying to decide what to do about that so i'm irritated by that but otherwise next we have the danessa myricks light work volume what is this four because i think volume five is the newest she just came out with with all the neutral shades in it but this is what it looks like on the inside i like everyone else hate these four shades across the middle but the shimmers at the top and the bottom i like now i wish she had came out with an eight pan like she did with the other ones or a tin pan since there's 10 of them in here and i would like that so much better so i'm kind of glad i don't have the first one because i wouldn't have um liked these shades in there so i'm like okay i have a good alternative to this palette too i told you all about it when i did the part with the unearthly cosmetics in it the um all i ever wanted volume two i feel like it's a good alternative for this i've swatched shades in it shown that it has very similar tones to that one and since this is 125 dollars and i think that one was less and then she has sales and you can use an influencer code like it might be a better deal to get that one instead especially if you don't like those tones in the middle but that one's literally all dual chrome multi chromes um metallic shimmer stuff like that so if you don't like um those shades that i just pointed out that i don't like then it'd be better for you to get that other one so i'm hoping all the rest of the stuff i'm showing you is stuff you have not seen before because i didn't see anywhere else in the videos but i shot some of these so long ago girl till i'm like i don't even know no more from it so we gonna see about that but next i have my what is this the naughty palette from bh cosmetics i got rid of the um miss claws lit palette this is what this one looks like the quality on this is really amazing i don't know what's going on with bh cosmetics and i really haven't bought from the brand since i found out they were owned by mega revolution the owner said that i'm like sorry like the comment that people that look like me hi you see my color here um needed to go back to africa just because somebody asked if the Jimi hendrix collection from their rock and roll brand was um from a black owned brand since nobody knew who the brand came from so ever since then i was kind of like i'm good you stay over there i'll stay over here and everyone can be blessed like that but yeah i haven't bought anything since but the quality on this was really nice so if you've seen on somebody's macari or poshmark and that's where you like to buy your secondhand makeup then i'd say go ahead and check it out i'm hoarding mine though so you can get my miss lit on it on macario next i have the abh norvina collection this is volume two this is the one people didn't really like that much, which I don't understand, because I'm like, I feel like people that love blue would really like this one. To me, this kind of gives blue, green, purple vibes, a little bit of pink, and something extra. I actually feel like this could be a good alternative for the Scooby-Doo palette, too, because remember, like, um, that Scooby-Doo palette that came out with, um, Glam Light, the bigger one? I feel like this gives some of the vibes of that in addition to the, um original uh, sorry in addition to volume six this volume two i feel like is really similar i feel like maybe that's why they pulled this one off the market because they knew they were going to redo it in some sort of way but i really like the color story of this and i keep it even though i rarely if ever reach for these because since i don't really buy from this brand anymore either i'm kind of just like i don't want to be wearing this palette and you add tips on my eyes and you know i gotta advertise for them so if i i rather just not sometimes i do still wear stuff though and just don't tag who it is from because i don't really want that brand getting attention off me next this is the volume three palette this one people really liked because it's more warm tone it's okay i wasn't crazy about it i thought the outer packaging was nice i thought the color story was nice but y'all know i don't really reach for warm tones like that so number two would probably be one i reach for more but i think i have number five the purple one i think that's the last one i bought from them if i remember correctly before i stopped buying from them as well because of their stance on the ukraine war um next we have the abh Novena five this is the one i was telling y'all about y'all know i'm a purple palette connoisseur so when i saw it i was like yes only thing that sucks is it has this pressed glitter in it it's like y'all couldn't find anything else to put in here and now i think about it, these pants look really similar to the size of the natasha denona five pants so i'm wondering if they are because if i can pop these out i have some fun 
dual chrome shades that I put in the Natasha Denona 5 pans that I would love to pop in here that I feel like it looks so much better and I would like so much better. Or at least when it comes to this one. Because this is the only one I'm really irritated about the glitter. And maybe this one right here. But I think that's supposed to be a shimmer and not a shimmery matte. But as you can see, this is a gorgeous purple color story. And I am here for it. I just don't reach for it that often because like I said, I'm not trying to rep for name right. So I kind of just leave it where it is. <clears throat> okay y'all we got two piles left so i'm gonna go through this menagerie stuff along with these other runoff brands crap i missed a graminatrix cosmetics one my bad so first off we got the claws palette from menagerie shout out to them they gave me this for free i had ordered the paws palette and i had ordered um something else from them i don't remember what it was but they ended up giving me the claws palette for free so this is what she looks like on the inside I think it's stunning. I actually came up with a really nice look with this palette when I got it and initially did my video with it during holiday last year that I didn't expect to do or didn't expect to like. I heard since they have changed the color story so it doesn't look like mine anymore and they made it more of a neutralish color story. I guess because a lot of people were like me and said they didn't know what to do with it. But I still managed to make a decent look with it. I think I did like a green and pink thing that looked really nice. It gave me like Poison Ivy-esque type vibes. But just switching out the red for the pink, if you will. But I thought it looked really nice. And I'm happy I have it in my collection. Because it's one of those, like, you know, you do what you're talking about. Like, I didn't plan on getting this and I wouldn't have bought it. But I love it so much. That's how that palette is for me. So next, I have the Paul's palette from Menagerie. So this one is a good alternative if you don't want to buy from Hooded Beauty. Because you've heard bad things about the Obsessions palette. Because some of them were good. Some of them were bad. Plus, if I remember correctly, that collection was limited edition. And I think this might be permanent at um, Menagerie. Don't quote me. But this is the Paul's palette. It's really similar to the... What palette was that? The Python palette from um, Hooded Beauty. It's really similar to that one, except it has more colorful, fun mattes. It does still have this one neutral matte, but the majority of their mattes are colorful. And as y'all know, like, Huda loves to put in, like, a deep brown matte for the outer V. Like, you want that to go with all these colorful shades. So, since this one kind of does the same thing, if you just want to support a <clears throat> small, smaller indie brand. Because, I mean, I don't consider her indie, but, you know, like, some people do. But, you know, if you want to support a small business if i remember correctly this is a husband and wife owned business and i definitely would say check out the menagerie pulse palette next i have the indigo ink i actually need to pack this because it's supposed to go in a video for something i don't know what it is but this is what she looks like on the inside if you didn't get a chance to get your hand on tina the fancy faces um collab with Uden's eye, i feel like this is a good alternative for you because i did an eye look with that palette and then i turned around and did the same eye look with this palette and one of y'all actually pointed out to me when i had posted on instagram and you were like, that looks exactly the same as the look you did with Tina's palette. And I was like, hmm, good points. And I put them side by side and they were somewhat similar. Now, they're not exact. I'm not saying they're exact. I'm just saying they're, like, somewhat similar. So, if you wanted alternative to Tina's, I'm not saying it's exact. I'm saying alternative for a reason. You should go ahead and pick this one up. Instead of paying somebody a hundred something dollars on Macari because you didn't know about Udon Zai when it came out or you weren't on YouTube Beauty or whatever the case may be when it came out or you might have not just had the funds. I would say get this one. Just keep in mind Menagerie stains your eyelids like a mug. So just just be prepared for your eyelids to be stained quite a bit because if you're keeping it on all day and wearing it all day, your eyelids will be stained. It's just a guarantee, girl. I'm sorry. Last for Menagerie, I have the Serenity palette from Annette's Makeup Corner and Menagerie. So this is what it looks like on the inside unfortunately my green has had a little incident but honey this color story is giving i'm living yes annette you did that girl so i love the color service i love the way the colors are set up too like you have this cute little section right here and i feel like you can go to every row and create a decent eye look like you can go down this one have your purple on the outer v you can put this on the lid this can be your inner corner you can rub put this in the crease and on your outer v and then put like the blue on the lid and have the orange with the pop up color in the inner corner or you can use a look at them like um six pans i know that's what i did with my look when i did the two looks with this palette in my video you had six right here six right here and then i created looks with both of them i think the only thing i didn't use was this in my initial video i used all the shades on this side together and then i used all the shades except like i said this one i think and it made really nice looks so you can look at it either one of those ways if you find it to be more helpful for you but that is the next palette we're on the last we're almost on the last stack y'all I, I got excited my leg was in the way so i couldn't see next i have the you beauty palette from glamination so this is the first palette they came out with um if y'all know i have them 
um, all around the room. I'm kind of irritated by that, so I need to fix that. Because I would like to have all the stuff together for when I have to grab and make a video real quick. But this is what their first palette looks like. Oh, y'all. The shade G'day is just flaky as ever. As you can see, it's all over my palette. And I haven't even been used it. But like a couple of times. So she's a very flaky shade. But um, here's what it looks like on the inside. They have a tendency, I feel like, of doing like warm tone and cool tone sets a lot of the time. Like this six pan here is like the... I guess warm tone and this would be like more of a cool tone if you will but i think it's really nice color story i was just scared to buy when it first came out because my girl um i think my girl karen and my girl dr ash on her makeup bought this when it initially came out was talking about how wonderful it was and then i think karen ended up getting on their pr on this once she did her video and then my girl dr ash was raving about it, and everybody was raving about it, so then i was like oh and then they um sold out of it and then they didn't bring it back for quite a long time so i literally got mine like quite recently because of how long it took for them to get it back in stock but i'm glad they brought it back and it was i think the one of the later things that they first started off with that i got this is the matte press pigment palette by sugar drizzle i remember when i first got their palette when they had the flamingo palette i was not impressed with their mattes but i did like their shimmers and i guess they heard those critiques from other people as well because they went ahead and fixed it and now they have nicer mattes like this whole palette of mattes here i I did a video comparing this palette to the ABH palette just so that you could see there are more affordable purple palettes out there if you don't want to spend a whole bunch of money on the ABH palette because you know those are like 60 bucks a piece. I think this one is more affordable and then you can use a coarse code cage makeup with them. I don't think Glaminatrix has a code setup or affiliate code or whatever so you can't use it with them but you can use cage makeup with this one and they have as you can see this is gorgeous purple palette for us purple palette connoisseurs so there you go next i have the glad my ex barbie was a dream summer palette so this is what it looks like on the inside y'all know these are my types of tones i like me a blue and purple situation i like the fact that of course there's pinks in it because there's barbie but they didn't do like overly heavy pink the way i feel like people would expect it to be and then it has like a nice little neutral corner over here for the people who want to wear it every day and then do like a pop of color even though i feel like this is still more of a colorful palette and they just grounded it with like these more neutral shades for you to make more rounded look if you will but i really like the quality of this and every time i look at this palette i always say i love the fact that she represented that everyone can be a barbie because there's like three different shades of barbies i feel like the average consumer i mean the average brand would have just had like this barbie but i like the fact that there's all the barbies like this a barbie for a good um group of people and different tones of people so i appreciate it that one but that's what she looks like i really love it it gives me the vibes of the ace pute palette y'all forget the palette though so if you already have that one you don't necessarily need to sit, get the glam light one unless you see it at, <coughs> excuse me tj maxx then go ahead and get it because it's affordable why not <laughs> i probably shouldn't be cursing so let me stop um this is the juvia's place for holla 2 palette this is what she looks like on the inside. This is my favorite of the Wahala well, palettes that they came out with. I know a lot of people like the first one better. I don't. I like this one better. I don't like the fact there's three pressed glitters in here, though. But, you know. I think they finally started listening and stopped doing the pressed glitters. Like, we asked. It took long enough. Because I feel like we asked for years. And they were like, color pop. Like, yeah, we're ignoring you. No one's listening. Okay, bye. Um, but they finally got it together and stopped doing so many pressed glitters. So, I'm happy about that. Because if I remember correctly, the new culture palette i think it has one or maybe no glitters don't quote me i have already packed it away and took it to my governor's house for a particular video so you won't see it here but i do really like this palette and this one usually goes on sale a lot so i mean all juvia's place goes on sale we know so if you want some juvia's place just buy it from their website just hope they ship it because my girl lily living life said that she never got her coffee shop palette and they never like responded to her and she sent like three customer service emails so just be aware of that oh good god look at all this glitter so everybody's been talking about how the palette the glue comes out of the palette and as you can see like sorry i don't know yeah you can see like my mirror here has popped up so like all the glitter is coming out so that's just something to be mindful of when you buy this palette like expect the glitter to pop out so maybe you should get like a hot glue gun when you do or maybe they just sent the ones like that to tj maxx because they were having that issue and that's why mine is like this because i bought this at tj maxx i don't think i bought mine from their website if i remember correctly wait no i'm sorry i did buy mine from their website somebody who bought it from tj maxx had the same issue too though so that's just the thing to be worried about when it comes to the first one that is the glitter is gonna pop out randomly but this is what the color story looks like i've only used this a couple of times because y'all know pop too it's my favorite one but it's packed up away right now because i need to take it 
filming another video with it as well so you will not see it in this palette uh, collection video unfortunately sorry but you know girl i gotta i gotta pack and i gotta move stuff and i gotta do stuff all the time but this one was okay like i didn't like the quality of this when i first got it i like the quality of the second one better than the first one i initially got it i've learned to like it okay but i still like the second one better because again it's about preference and color story and y'all know the color story of the second one is just better for me okay now i got the original culture palette here I love this palette. Every time I look at it, I feel like I get inspired to do a whole bunch of looks. It's a nice, you know, blue, green, purple, pink, neutral moment. I feel like this is um the original. This is my version, I guess, of um what do you call that palette? The um it's a mood palette that I made. I feel like this is like the um version that was already made for me, and I just <laughs> went ahead and made another one for me since I didn't like the way it's a mood looked on its own, but. This is what she looks like. She's stunning. Y'all, my battery's trying to die and we at the end of the road. I'm like, no. I only got some Pat McGrath palettes to show. I showed y'all the majority of them, if I remember correctly. The ones I don't have here are obviously the new one. And I'm doing some palette masters with them, so I'm not going to have all of them here. I'm sorry. Again, y'all know I'm always filming something and doing something, so I'll be having time. But this is the Mega Mothership from Pat McGrath, darling. This is the first one she came out with. This is Celestial Divinity. This one pairs really nicely with the um, Jackie Aina palette from ABH. That's what she looks like. Absolutely stunning. I'm here for it. Love it. It's a vibe. Sorry, I'm not trying to talk that much because I told you I'm at 20%. And the last thing I want to do is have to leave all this in the store just to recharge my um, phone. And then, you know, have to come back just to do this. Then you have the Celestial um, Odyssey. That's the red one here. This is what she looks like. This is what she added the new shimmery formula in that I absolutely love. Like the shade right here. And that green are extra sparkly and shimmery because of it. I mean, I know it had a lot of neutral shades in it. And I was irritated by that like a lot of people were. So with the new palette, she finally gave us the color store we asked her for. And I was excited about that one. So let me go ahead and pull that out. And then I'll show you these two motherships. And then we'll be done. Is this the one I've been using? I feel like it is. Yeah, so this is the... Celestial um, Nirvana palette this is what she looks like on the inside. My red shade broke, unfortunately, but I love the fact that there are colorful mattes in here. That's what I was most excited about. Now I need a blue, green, and purple Celestial Nirvana palette to go with the what is Nocturnal Nirvana quad because I feel like that's where the Nirvana situation came from. And I'm here for it. It's a whole vibe. So we got these two motherships, and then I'll be done because. The majority of the other motherships are at my grandmother's house, so I already showed them to you in other videos because certain ones I leave in certain places at certain times. It's the whole thing. But this is mothership one. What is this one called? Subliminal. Of course, y'all know I've always had a love for blue, so this one started off being the first one I bought one year because y'all know I love blues. So it was smoky tone palette with blues. I was here for it. I'm all about it. Then the decadence palette is the other one I have to show you. I really wanted this one for a while. I was gonna buy it the year for my birthday, but I didn't realize that Pat McGrath palettes like the lip shade edition. I just thought all her stuff was like permanent or whatever. So like when um I couldn't get it, I was like, wait, what is going on? You tell me I can't get it. Like her stuff is always available at Sephora. And then I looked up one day at Sephora and it was just gone. I was like, what is going on? I was blessed enough to get it in the gold packaging that was supposed to be just for the um, Star Wars one when they re when they launched the Star Wars collection originally, the first one. And this is what she looks like on the inside. As you can see, I don't use it that much. I usually like to pair this with the, what is it, the um, Safari palette from Natasha Denona, but it is a gorgeous color story. It's just her metallic stuff, so it's not like her special shades or anything. So I feel like that's why I don't reach for it as much because it's like when you have all those gorgeous quads with special shades in it and all these gorgeous palettes with special shades in it, it's hard to reach for one that's not... A special shade because you know she's known for having special shades i'm like i just can't you know fathom not using a palette with special shades those are the palettes y'all i made it i made it i made it before the battery died so i hope you all enjoyed this video remember you all the dimes i'll catch you guys in the next one i'll try to include some other stuff if i bring it back before i edit this be blessed girl bye